Hi everyone. Today I just want to take a moment and give you a preview of some of the new features that's being included in version 11 of Simple GIS Client. Version 11 is expected to be released sometime during the first quarter of 2019. The first feature I'd like to demonstrate is dealing with georeference PDFs. For existing users of version 10 of Simple GIS Client, you may be familiar with the USGS data wizard that's included that allows you to query and connect to the USGS department and download data from the USGS. Also, some of the later topo maps available from the USGS are provided in a georeference PDF format. To display this georeference topo map in Simple GIS, it first had to convert the georeference PDF to a geotiff format. And unfortunately, in version 10, it would convert all of the layers contained in the georeference PDF into the geotiff with no option for the user to select which layers that they want it converted. However, as you can see here in the version 11 of Simple GIS Client, you will be presented with a new dialog box once the georeference PDF is downloaded that allows you as normal to select the resolution of the georeference or geotiff file but also it gives you an option to select what layers that you want converted out of the georeference PDF into your geotiff. So you can simply click on any of these uh, plus uh, buttons to expand the layers that's available in the georeference PDF and this gives you a listing of all of the layers that's currently contained in the georeference PDF and you can select which layers that you want to include in your geotiff by simply making sure they are checked. If you do not want to include a layer, you simply uncheck the box next to the layer name. So once you have the list of layers that you want to include it in your GeoTIFF, you would simply click Apply. And at this point, the application will begin the conversion process of converting the GeoReference PDF to a GeoTIFF file. And of course, it may take a moment to perform this conversion depending upon the resolution that you chose for your GeoTIFF and the number of layers being converted. Once the file has been converted, the application will add the GeoTIFF to your map document as we can see here. And now we see that we have our Topo GeoTIFF image downloaded into our map. And again, it would only contain the layers that we had selected during the conversion process. So that is one new feature that's been added in version 11. The second new feature, which I think is pretty exciting, allows the user to create their own custom data forms for collecting or displaying attribute data. Of course, in Simple GIS version 10, you could easily digitize new features just like we're doing here. In this case, I have a polygon shape file, and I just added a new polygon feature. But of course, if I wanted to edit the attribute data, I would have to use the uh, ID feature tool to bring up the feature attributes dialog box, which is the default dialog box. And from here, I could edit the attribute data. And while this certainly uh, allows you to edit the attribute data, the new feature allows you to create your own custom data form and gives you a lot more flexibility on how you want to display or edit feature data. So to begin with, you simply double click on the layer to bring up the layer properties dialog box and in the lower right corner you see a new custom form editor button. As I click on this, I get a new graphical custom data form designer. And here in the center of the screen is my empty form space. And it's on this uh, space that I can add different form controls using the toolbar located along the right hand side of the form designer. So for instance, if I wanted to add an edit box, I simply select this tool, click on the location on the form where I want to place the control. And of course, I see the control appear and I have these grip handles on the edge of the form that allows me to grab and drag to resize the control 
or I can click and drag to move the control on the form itself. Also located at the bottom of the screen is where I can set all of the properties for this new control. So for instance, I need to set the data field that I want this edit box tied to. So I simply click on the drop down arrow and select the data field that I want to tie this edit control box to. In addition, I can mark this uh, as a read-only control or as a document link or I can even control the font properties for the edit box itself. Now I'm going to simply place a label above this edit control so I'll know what this control is and I'll just reposition it and then I'll just type a caption in for this label. In this case I'm just going to indicate the field that the data in this edit box represents. Now I'm going to add a new edit box. And I'll position it next to the one I just added and I'm going to resize this one and make it a tad bit longer. And this field is going to be, or this edit box is going to be associated to a field called topo map that contains a file name to an associated topo map to the feature. So in this case, I want to mark it as read-only and as a document link, which means the user can click on the value in this edit box to launch the topo map. And so therefore, I'm going to change the color of the font to blue and make it underlined. And now I'm going to add a label again over this edit box. And I'll just change the caption of the label to indicate the field that this edit box is associated to. Now let's say if I want it to go and I'm going to add a checkbox since I have a boolean field in my shapefile that's called surveyed which just indicates whether this particular track has been surveyed. So I'll change the caption of my checkbox to indicate the field and what it represents. And now I'm going to add a combo box and so this combo box is going to allow a user to select from a list of values to populate a field. So in this case I have a surveyed by which indicates the person that did the survey and here under the list items I'm actually going to type in the possible values that the user can choose from to populate this field. So I'll just add a couple of names and then I'll also add an NA for not applicable in case it had not been surveyed. And I'll, again, I'm just going to add a label over this combo box to indicate what the data in this combo box represents. And now I'll also add a radio group. So in this case, I have a field here that I'm going to add a radio group that only allows the users to select from a few values to populate a field and for the caption I'm going to call this category. So in this case I'm assuming in this example let's just assume this is a category of the primary trees on this uh, track of land so I'll add a few items here under my radio group that allows the user to choose from So as I add these, then I'll resize my radio box a little bit, just kind of make it in line with my other controls. And now I'm going to come back and add another edit box. So I'll add this one under the topo map document. And in this particular field, this control on associating it to a, a field called image file and I'm going to make this read only and a document link as well and I'm going to add another label over the top of this to indicate what this is and what this field is going to contain is a folder that's just going to reference a set of photos that describes this this land. So one of the new uh, features are, or 
I guess an interesting feature with this is I can add what's called file select buttons that allows me to associate to a particular edit control and it'll display either a file selection dialog box or a folder selection dialog box which allows me to easily select files that I'm linking to to populate in these fields without having to type in the file name so it gives a graphical interface to select this data so I'm adding another file select and this one's going to be associated to this edit control I'm going to change the caption for the dialog box that will be displayed when the user clicks on this button and this is going to be a folder select unlike the file select box above and in this case now I'm going to add an image thumbnail box so this is useful because sometimes a single photo is not enough to accurately describe a feature so this allows you to group a set of photos in a common folder and then link to that folder and display all of these photos in this preview box. Now lastly I'm simply going to add my OK and cancel buttons on the dialog box. So I have one apply which will accept any data changes I put in to update the attribute data and then I have a cancel in case I change my mind. And now I simply click and drag to resize my form just to fit around my controls. And I now click apply. And then I have one other checkbox in the same region under my layer properties that prompts for feature attributes on add, which means as I digitize new features, it'll automatically display my new data dialog box. So as I come, and if I was to edit the shape file, add a new rectangle feature, I now see that my new dialog box comes up and I can come and populate my data as you can see with my combo box and my radio buttons and now I can see when I click on the topo map button I can come and it opens up a file select dialog box I can select the file I want for my photos remember this was a folder select so I simply select the fol uh, folder containing my photos and now I see that all of the photos in that folder shows up in my thumbnail view on this and if I was to click apply it has now saved those attributes with that feature. If I was to come and add a new feature one of the things I can do if I was adding uh, several features that was going to have all of the same uh, data I can enter my data and right click and say save as default and what that does is it saves those settings as default data such that as I continue to add new feature those fields that I had populated and saved as default are pre-populated on any new feature so that just saves me a few clicks as I'm adding new features in addition I could copy attributes, paste attributes, what have you if I was to toggle editing off and now if I use my ID feature tool I now see that it uses my new dialog box that I designed for this layer and as I said this is a link to a file and notice that when I selected the file if it detects that it is uh, in the root of your shapefile it will add it as a relative path which is uh, the recommendation for adding uh, link documents I do recommend that you uh, add them or put the documents in the root of your shapefile or in a subfolder underneath your root. And also, I can double click on any of these image thumbnails and it will bring up the full size view of the image in whatever um, program is associated with that file type. So in this case for JPEGs, this is the program uh, on the particular machine I'm running on that's associated for viewing JPEGs. Also, if you'll notice, since I'm not editing the layer, now all of these fields are read-only. I can't change any of these values. And so this was just simply a way to give a preview of a couple of the new features that can be found in the next version of Simple GIS Client, which will be version 11, due to be released sometime in the first quarter of 2019.